Good afternoon. As it says up here on the slide, I'm Tom Wilson, freelance sailing coach. I was asked to sort of speak about my uh, introduction into the outdoors and then my, my journey as a, uh, you know, as a career, if you like. Um, so started off when I was 14 at a local activity centre to us, um, a Cobner Activity Centre. Um, my dad is a farmer. The centre used to borrow his tractor every winter to get those power boats in and out the water, and the deal was that me and my brother learned to sail um, for that use of that tractor, and, that, and that's how the journey sort of started, really. Um, then I used to go down to the centre and make sandwiches in the morning, to the opportunity then to go out on the water in the afternoon to drive power boats, to learn to sail, to do a bit of windsurfing, generally just sort of get myself into trouble out on the water. Um, at that point, sort of decided that I wanted to take it a little bit further, so. I started looking at some instructor training and, and my personal development, um, similar to the, the first speaker, sort of, you know, what do you do when you get into it? I started off doing an apprenticeship as a sailmaker. I was 16 at the time, didn't know what I wanted to do at college, um, and decided that being a sailmaker was probably quite productive in my introduction into the industry. Following year, became a dinghy instructor and then started working at the centre. And again, how do you get into the industry um, and pay for things? I ultimately worked for a season for nothing to get my dinghy instructor's qualification at the beginning of the following one. The same for my senior instructor and powerboat. And then a year after that, in 2001, I got ex uh, invited to go to the RYA Coach Assessor um, Assessment Weekends. Um, at the time, the youngest coach in the UK at the age of 20. And quite a surprise to me as I actually managed to get through that qualification and pass it by the end of the summer. So I was quite pleased with that. I then worked a little bit, and I'll come on to my work experience in a minute, but I then went to the University of Chichester and did a BA in Adventure Education. Um, so have done the, the formal uh, academic route as well as the, the practical working in the industry. Um, why did I choose to go and do an Adventure Ed degree? I think I wanted some more theoretical understanding of what I was doing. I was getting a good practical understanding but wanted to know more. Um, and the course over four years looked at psychological and physiological aspects of human beings and the outdoors and how we react to different situations about the environment, our effects on that environment and how the environment affects us as people that work uh, in the outdoors. Analysis of performance, so looking at performance profiling athletes at different levels and different abilities and different sports um, and then how you manage the groups in the outdoors which is quite a big part of, of what we do. During that four-year degree, the third year is a placement degree, I, a placement year. I went up to the Conway Centre up in North Wales on Anglesey, um, and this was a great opportunity for me to do other things other than just sailing. So I spent my time developing um, skills in, in paddling, um, SPA, mountain leader. Um, I'll come on to the triathlon bit in a second. Um, but working with groups, developing young people as people, not just as their hard skills that they learn through doing paddling, climbing, and so on and so forth. Um, the triathlon coach, I thought I would drop in there. That's something that I've picked up very recently. But the important thing is there's so much information and knowledge that I've transferred from teaching in the outdoors to teaching in triathlon and vice versa. And it has only made me, I believe, a stronger coach with a greater breadth of knowledge. So after I finished university, I ended up going back to the Conway Centre and freelance there for over a year. Um, and then I moved around a little bit. When I first started racing uh, as a sailor, I was involved with West Sussex Schools and Youth Sailing Association. Consequently, I then went on to be vice chairman of the, of the committee and got involved with organising training, instructor training uh, and annual regattas. Um, heavily involved with Bosom Sailing Club and its sail training development. We set up a new programme for five weeks training in the summer for the local cadets and powerboat training. I then went on to manage or assistant manage Lagoon Water Sports at the marina in Brighton for a short period. I've done some performance coaching with sailing of, of different abilities up to sort of club squad level sailors. Worked a little bit at Plasmeni, at the time the Welsh National Water Sports uh, Centre. Involved with the Nuffield Trust at Indefatigable, which is on the Menai Strait, um, and looking to go back there to help them set up uh, and develop their centre this summer. And also I'm um, an RYA freelance coach, or coach uh, freelance, um, in all over the place at the moment. I then got an invitation to go back to the university to work as their technician a couple of years after I graduated, um, which was great to go back and sit on the other side of the fence. So I'd been a student there, and now I was working on the other side. So ultimately looking after the outdoor kit, 
um, attending, unfortunately, eight residentials in a year, um, sort of going to the Alps, Lanzarote, um, the Gower, so on and so forth. Um, and my job was to make sure the kit was all in place um, and learned a huge amount from it. One of these things that you, when you leave, you realize how much you did gain fr from doing that. Now um, I'm involved with many different organizations, one of them being the International Sailing Federation. I'm one of their uh, appointed trainers. We're trying to develop grassroots sailing participation and coach training uh, in countries that don't have an organization like the Royal Yachting Association like we do in the UK, so helping countries get going. So this year I've visited um, the Cayman Islands to start with, which is the picture on the right, um, Indonesia, and uh, I went out to El Salvador in the middle of uh, November. This coming year, I'm off to Oman for two weeks, um, the end of next week. I then go into, I think, Korea, end of March, and then Bahamas at Easter. So that's my, my first uh, half of the year planned out. So it's been a real, real insight into education, different cultures. Um, it's amazing, El Salvador, we ended up going there and our, the optimists that they were using had bamboo masts and booms on them. Um, and they just have nothing. And being able to give them the opportunity to go sailing was just incredible and to train their coaches for the future. I'm also involved with Rockley Water Sports. Um, currently, the, uh, last year, I worked with the Oman sail team. They brought their, their senior instructors over to the UK, and I helped um, with some courses with them. I've also been involved with the Icelandic Sailing Association um, and went to Iceland to run a summer camp for them uh, last summer. We had 50 sailors, which is the most or the biggest number of people that Iceland have ever had out on the water sailing in one go. The issue that they have currently is they now don't have enough boats for the sailors that they have. So um, you know, they, they've developed from three or four boats up to 50 sailors on the water in, in under 24 months. And hopefully that will double in the next year as, as and when the funding comes in. So again, through a different organization, I've been involved with other bits and pieces that go on around the world. So currently, as I say, working with ISAF, um, with Rockley, with the Conway Centre, Portsmouth Water Sports Centre, I'm involved with all of their instructor training and senior instructor training this year. Um, also involved with writing some publications for ISAF, we're trying to develop some generic logbook and coaching handbooks that can be easily translated to different languages in and around the world. So um, it's been quite interesting seeing it from that side as well. Something else that I thought I would just add in, because uh, it's all been about me so far, um, just thought about a few things on coaching in different cultures um, that have come across um, in the last 12 months. It's the first time I've ever really been training abroad. So first of all is working with a translator. Uh, every time you say something, you have to pause and wait for somebody to translate. And then everybody looks at you and you're standing there, not allowed to do anything. And it, and it takes time and it takes, in, in some respects, quite a lot of confidence to stand up there and do it. And, and that's certainly been very interesting. Another big thing, limited equipment and the quality of that equipment. If any of the centers that we've worked out in and around the world, if they were to come to an RYA center or go for RYA recognition, they would just wouldn't get it because of the quality of the equipment. But it's making the most of what you have, making it as safe as possible and, and getting afloat. So that's been quite a challenge to try and convince people that they actually need to do some work on their boats so that they can get out on the water. There's different approaches to the coaching, learning and education. Okay, a lot of these third world countries are very military orientated and it's very, very difficult to try and get the message across that we don't have to be very authoritarian within the way that we deliver and coach people. Speed of which things happen very, very slowly. Um, it takes a long time in the initial setup for these courses with the emailing conversations, but when you also then get there to the course, when they say nine o'clock, they probably mean 10, 10.30 in some sort of very laid back Central American countries and Indonesia. Um, different religions has put sort of a different spin on, on what you do, having to stop for prayer times, having to appreciate um, different cultural differences and, and what they, they're, they're things that people need to do or they, they feel they need to do. So Oman next week will be very interesting. We get a much longer lunch break because uh, they, need to, they, they pray at lunchtime and, and so on and so forth. And the last one was sort of on security issues. Now, I haven't really come across too much until I ended up in El Salvador and looking out of my hotel window was Starbucks with an armed guard stood on the door with a shotgun. Um, I consequently was not allowed anywhere without uh, an armed guard or, uh, or somebody looking after me just because uh, the gangs and stuff out there uh, are ruthless. So it's been very interesting working in, in that sort of environment, having somebody 
look after you like that and just not being able to free reign to do what you want. Anyway, a little bit shorter than the last presentation, but I, just a little bit on, on me and, and my career through the outdoors and how I got into it.